Good evening, good evening everybody. Welcome to Trading Capitals. Exclusive analysis. We're going to be discussing in today's live stream a couple of different components of the market. We'll look at all of the S&P 500 sectors and then we're going to look at some individual stocks, some notable volume breakouts, volume breakdowns. We're going to give a little bit of a macro landscape throughout the analysis. We'll touch base on the important commodities and then we'll have a little part of a section for Q. And a so let me just um, get a couple things ready here. Give me about thirty seconds. So again, the point of this stream is just to try to help educate, try to provide some analysis, technical insights, fundamental insights into the overall market, potentially discovering some new trade setups. You know, a little bit of a Sunday prep before the market opens is always helpful. I find, you know, when you scan through charts, put in the work, you often will find some highly probable trade setups. So hopefully that's what we can uh, discover here. But just looking at the Bitcoin charts, what's interesting about Bitcoin is Bitcoin and crypto are actually ripping here in the... Uh, in the Sunday trading session. So a nice recovery in the price action of crypto. Across the board, Bitcoin is currently up about 4.42%, actually outperforming Ethereum. Ethereum is only up 3.3, total crypto market cap up 3.97. So the relative strength is being observed in Bitcoin. Bitcoin dominance is increasing here. Obviously there's some old coins that are performing a little bit better like Doge, Solana, but nevertheless, uh, Bitcoin is definitely holding some dominance over uh, Ethereum in this little short-term rally. Now, hourly chart, you're going to see, I'm just going to actually turn off a lot of these moving averages to keep the analysis simple to begin with. And basically what we're seeing here on Bitcoin is a nice little breakout out of an inverse head and shoulders pattern on the hourly chart. So you can see that Bitcoin has triggered this initial bullish pattern. It's already completed a substantial amount of upside, but this type of pattern should bring you back to about 69,000 right in this resistance. And what's interesting about that resistance is if you actually look at what type of resistance that is, that's the resistance where we broke down. So what's interesting about TA is you can have bullish patterns inside of bearish patterns, bearish patterns inside of bullish patterns. So as of now, you can actually see that a head and shoulders on the four hour chart of Bitcoin has triggered here. So this would be your, your right shoulder trigger. You got your technical breakdown here, confirmed it. Retrace, the retrace was rejected again, just piercing that neckline, but getting rejected. Now, the fact that you're triggered the longer term bearish pattern on the four hour chart, however, you're triggering a bullish pattern. What's interesting is even if this upside target retests this neckline, you're still technically watching this bearish pattern potentially trying to play out, which takes you to about 55,000 on the charts. Now what's interesting is again, a lot of people are probably bared up and now they're taking it higher. So stocks like Mara, Coin, MSTR, they're likely going to rip tomorrow because Bitcoin and crypto are up. I mean, if you take a look at where MSTR is basically closed the session, let me just erase some of these. You can see MSTR has closed at 1523. When we look at Bitcoin's daily chart, you know, daily chart of Bitcoin on Friday closed at the lows here down about 2.6%, closed at 63.7. So basically from that little low close on Friday, you know, Bitcoin's already trading up 4.7%. So what is that going to do the likes of MicroStrategy tomorrow? It's probably going to push it up higher, you know, 4%, 5% move. You know, even if you use a two to one leverage, because this name has definitely a lot more beta underneath it, you know, an 8% move could put you back up to, say, 1650. So you're probably going to be seeing this name gap up tomorrow. Uh, calls in the 1600 range are probably going to be very, very um, uh, likely to happen. So definitely watch this name for calls. There could always be an intraday reversal at some point. Just be mindful that Wall Street loves to push crypto back up on the weekends and then typically does a lot of selling when people are chasing it in the open market. Remember, a lot of the open market funds, ETFs in the New York Stock Exchange are closed during the weekend, so people can't really react to this price. So they often gap these stocks up and then they sell into that liquidity. So just be careful, although 1600 calls look very, very good, in my opinion, just be careful if they start uh, selling the crypto. These names can reverse very, very quickly itself. Even if you look at Coinbase, still fairly strong chart in a very strong uptrend at the moment, consolidating inside of this wide range red bar. 
We'll see if this name wants to push higher. It does look like it's trying to potentially form and establish a flag pattern to move higher. Mare is another name that we'll continue to look at. You know, Mare is right now also potentially putting in an inside bar consolidation. Remember, Mare hit this big, big uh, support zone around this 15th middle, middle of March period and is now trying to bounce off of it. But this chart has definitely not been acting as well as some of the other crypto based charts but crypto calls probably in the morning are looking uh, like a nice trade on the long side but with the names like those i would definitely consider taking profits in terms of the upside target again on bitcoin with this little move since you have broken out you can see that you are coming up into some resistance this is your next resistance on the hourly chart you have this pivot high to this pivot high and that's what you're tagging right now so although you've had a stunning move just be mindful you are hitting some resistance but the upside target of this little mini bullish pattern should take us to 69k all right let's continue to move along here since we've touched base a little bit on the crypto no problem paul you're welcome you're welcome happy to help out um, basically we're going to look at some of the s p 500 sectors we'll actually quickly go through all of the s p 500 sectors so i'm going to start with materials we're just going to do a quick rundown and then i have looked at one of the sectors where i think there's some bullish setups occurring you can see xlb taking a little bit of a breather on the daily chart coming into some uh, resistance here, materials has been super strong. And naturally, when you expect an asset to approach double top, you know, into these two massive reversal pivots on the weekly chart after a huge extension move, you naturally should expect some sort of consolidation. I would not chase the long side in the material sector. I would actually be more inclined to potentially scalp short as assets are now into resistance on the materials, but definitely still a strong sector. Just wait for a pullback. XLC, so communications. Communications, believe it or not, has been the best year-to-date performing sector up 16.44% on the year. So even outperforming XLK, can you believe that? So definitely a very strong, strong base sector. You can see that it had this beautiful flag pattern consolidation and it had a breakout now trading right into this parallel channel that's really kept you in check since you've hit multi pivots down here pivot high pivot high so definitely some strong resistance again this pink moving average is the monthly moving average it's a 31 day moving average just a simple moving average and you can see that price action has held there quite a number of times so expect that if we fall that's going to be a big big level of support overall it does appear that xlc wants to try to push to the all-time highs but again stocks like meta google are certainly extended in the short term so you're going to have to get a lot of other participation to start try to pull this sector up and do some of the heavy lifting because meta is certainly um, by far getting a little bit uh, extended here on the charts and putting in a couple of divergences still in a very strong uptrend but definitely getting extended along with the markets at this point and obviously meta has one of the biggest weightings in the overall communications etf and to note recently there's been a lot of selling being observed by mark zuckerberg himself unloading quite a few billions here and there over the last couple weeks so definitely keep that in mind zuckerberg is notorious for often uh, timing the market in a really really big way so just understand that All right, so let's continue here. We've discussed materials and communications. Next one is energy. What's interesting about XLE Energy is it's actually gone through a really, really big breakout here, one of the best performing sectors. Again, my members know we've been caught the energy trade fairly early in the session, really since we were even consolidating in this bull flag range. We, we took XOM calls, we rode rig profits. And right now, energy is just trading into some weekly resistance. You know, chart is still looking strong. You've still put in a multi-monthly consolidation pattern here and it is creating this upsloping wedge pattern that does look like it uh sorry ascending triangle pattern that does look like it wants to break out so energy i still remain bullish but definitely just a little bit of extension move in the weekly chart quite a few consecutive weeks i would like to see this consolidate you know the fact that it is uh consolidating at the highs of the range and you've actually had say oil Oil's actually just pulled back over the last few sessions into its first level of support, its previous breakout pivot. You know, oil's pulled back a few dollars here, and the XLE ETF actually hasn't really even pulled back. It's actually still trended higher as oil's pulled. So that's a definitely a very, very strong uh, relative divergence, you know, where oil's pulled back, but XLE is still remaining strong. So definitely a lot of underlying bids in the overall price action. We've actually achieved my short-term target i do have some upper targets that i'll share with members 
Um, but uh, as of now, we have reached the short term target. I would love to see a small pullback. The next moving average of support, I would love to see retest. I mean, I don't even think you need to retest your weekly moving average. That's your seven. But let's just see on the daily chart what short term moving average we could retest. So you're way above the seven. You know, if you just consolidate sideways here and let this 20 moving average catch up, you know, maybe the 20 moving average fills this little gap fill. And then I think you could be ready to make a little bit more of a move higher in the energy front. But uh, definitely be mindful that you are hitting a decent sized resistance trend line. So this trend line goes all the way back to this 2014 high, your high pivot in 2022. So this is a area where sellers could be lurking just in the short term. All right, let's quickly, and again, just in terms of XLE's gains, it's one month has moved up 7.68% in, in the last month. Zero to gains are up 10.25%. So it's actually trying to uh, overflow, overthrow some of the third and fourth best performing sectors just with the recent last month of performance. So definitely seeing energy starting to catch a bit and outperform. All right, let's quickly move along to the financials, XLF. So XLF has also been a monster, monster sector, seeing a heavy, heavy reversal on Friday. So a nasty reversal. That's a bearish engulfing candle on the daily chart. That could be signifying a near-term top. Weekly chart, still very, very extended. One of the more overbought sectors, even on a historical basis, you're trading with a weekly RSI of over 81, higher than this previous pivot over here. So, I mean, financials are one of the, are actually probably the most overbought sector in the market as of now. Still haven't quite officially hit this long-term upsloping wedge pattern, but I don't, I don't even think you're going to need to hit that level at this point in time, especially with this double top resistance. Notice how you actually did that peekaboo new high, got one daily close above it, lured in new investors, and then they sold into them. So this could be a failed breakout. A double top resistance on financials is in play. This sector is more inclined to be a short. You look at names like JPM has been a monster trading stock, trading at all time highs in the most overbought level that JP Morgan has ever been as well. I mean, this stock has just, you know, been a monster, monster, monster to uh, continue just grind and grind week after week after week. You know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. This is one for the ages for a financial stock. 10 consecutive weeks up in a row, blasting through its previous all-time high resistance. So notice the strength in JP Morgan. This was its previous all-time high. Look at the financials. You know, financials XLF are only just testing its previous all-time high, but JP Morgan is way above its high. So this makes me think that if JP Morgan corrects back down to its previous high here, goes through a nice consolidation part. And granted, that would still be a strong weekly uptrend. If you got to retrace back to your previous all time high pivot on JPM, that would likely mean that XLF is probably retesting this previous high pivot around 37 bucks, which would also be a healthy, healthy retrace for the overall sector. But definitely one of the more extended sectors in terms of year to date performance financials are about 10.09%. So they're performing very, very well. They're actually, uh, yeah, outperforming the S&P 500 by a small margin. All right, let's continue to move along here. Industrials, XLI is the next sector that we will take a peek at. Uh, I, we just got a comment there by MW Moench. Jamie Dimon has been selling shares. Thank you for that insight. So Jamie Dimon has been selling some shares uh, from JP Morgan. So nice, nice little insider information there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's continue to move along. So you can see XLI, we've been talking about this 125 level as our potential upside target. That was achieved. And you almost just pretty much closed the session on Friday at that level. So my upside target for industrials has been achieved. Uh, what does that mean? That likely means we're probably going to see some sort of a consolidation, likely a pullback. This sector needs a pullback. You've actually broken through massive, massive critical resistance zone. And uh, as of now, this channel should be your next major support zone. In a pullback, you should see a test of this channel. You can see where these two channels kind of confluence and intersect. Right around this 120 area is probably going to be where the industrials want to try to hold. If you don't hold this channel and you form a bearish pattern, you could retest all the way down to 110, 108 zone these two previous pivot high resistance. So I would look for a buy if you're a long term investor and trader as a higher conviction buy in and around this 110 108 level. If you're a short term scalper trader, you can probably look for a 
some buys in and around this aggressive 120 zone but definitely extended on all metrics daily weekly chart and does need a potential pullback uh, let's take a quick peek at um, the next sector which is xlk so technology the most important sector the uh, heaviest weighted sector of all of the market components the s p 500 the nasdaq you can clearly see that xlk is still into this weekly uh, parallel resistance pivot low to your capitulation in covid pivot low pivot high, pivot high. You've just been chopping and grinding. I still think that uh, XLK wants to see, is seeing some distribution in that range and probably likes to, needs to retest this previous trend line of resistance. This is a 24 year trend line that we actually broke out of on the monthly chart. Naturally, you should do a retest of that, that previous major resistance zone before you actually break out and create a new flag pattern. So I think a retest of this 190, 185 zone is probably going to be likely, whether or not it happens this week or this or next week, I think we are going through a little bit of a distributive phase here in the overall tech space. You're actually seeing the S&P 500 outperform the NASDAQ. Typically in a bull market run, you actually see tech on a continuation basis outperforming the S&P. And we're actually seeing the S&P, relatively speaking, over the last few couple of weeks outperforming the Qs. So definitely interested to see if uh, we see more capital rotate out of tech and other S&P 500 based sectors. That's certainly what I think is still shaping up and we're starting to see definitely some initial stages of it with the likes of energy, starting to see some accumulation, some other sectors that we'll discuss. All right, let's continue to see a uh, move along here. So XLP is staples. Consumer staples, uh, definitely a strong uptrend trading inside this parallel channel. You can see that staples broke out out of this little bit of a channel over here have traded above it for a nice couple weeks i think this is just consolidating to move higher nice two-week consolidation consolidating the short-term breakout i think consumer staples are still going to be one of those sectors that benefit from potentially money flowing out of tech chasing some of these more defensive based sectors i think staples are one of the sectors that are going to get some more money flow over the coming weeks and months in comparison to some of the other sectors of the S&P 500. Naturally speaking, you know, the upside target since you've broken out of this zone, I think your next big resistance is going to be your double top, your 8144. But we're actually breaking out of a potential range. There is a scenario here where you could be creating an inverse head and shoulders. Here's your left shoulder. Here's your nice, beautiful head. If price action checks back and forms a right shoulder, this pattern is going to absolutely fly in the second half of uh, 2024 and potentially even quarter two. You know, we're approaching the end of quarter one here. This is the final week of quarter one. Remember, it is a shortened trading week as well in, observ in observation of Good Friday. But uh, it's going to be a definitely a volatile week because it is shortened and it is it is a month end. You know, come come Monday next week, you're going to have the first of April. So that is a new quarter starting. So expect a lot of capital to be rotating into some other sectors as we approach the next quarter. So again, watching for potential inverse head and shoulders. Now we may never ever get that right shoulder. This pattern is still being observed as a technical breakout. You haven't confirmed the breakout yet on a weekly chart. You're trying, you've only confirmed the breakout on the daily, but as long as you stay above this neck, this little trend line here, you should grind higher. A nice flag pattern could be bought for higher prices, but as long as you stay above that, you should be okay. If you start getting a close below that, then you could be retesting 71 bucks, 70 bucks here, which would still be potentially forming that right inverse head and shoulders. And then you can adjust your targets based on that. So XLU or sorry, XLP still looking poised to potentially move higher. Let's move along to real estate. XLRE has actually been one of the worst performing sectors. Year to date, real estate is actually down 3.51% when the S&P is up 9.7. So a clear, clear underperformance in, in uh, real estate. And that's due to the hiking of rates, right? Rates have stayed elevated for a little bit longer than what most market participants are expecting. Fed hasn't really cut yet, despite uh, a little bit of a dovish FOMC press conference last week. But uh, as of now, real estate looks to be potentially forming a little bit of a flag pattern little bit of a double top resistance, parallel channel resistance, down sloping trend line of resistance. So obviously this is a big spot where you rejected once. 
you're being rejected again. And this rejection actually happened on a bearish weekly engulfing candle. Not really what you want to see when you're making a second attempt or actually a third attempt at breaking out of this down sloping resistance. So this is your attempt one, attempt two, and then attempt three actually had the worst rejection out of all the rejections. So even though you've weakened this area by tapping it multiple times, your third tap of that area should have been the, you know, this, this resistance should have been weakened, but it actually saw your worst type of rejection, which makes me think that, you know what, real estate could be in trouble here again, whether it's commercial, real estate could be in trouble. And that kind of fits the criteria that I've been discussing with my members where I think we actually will see a little bit of a resurgence in inflation, not going back to the highs that we were, but I think that uh, the 2% target is well off the table. I don't think we're going to be getting that. I think you almost had a scenario where Powell basically just confirmed uh, last week that, you know what, his 2% target is probably more like 3% now. And I even think 3% is going to be sticky. I think we could teeter in a range between 3 and 4%. And if we press to the high end of 4%, rates are still going to stay higher. Fed won't cut. And the U.S. dollar is going to have to start to rally. And when you look at how commodities are breaking out across the board, that could be why real estate is shaping up to be potentially a little bit of, again, another underperforming sector. All right, let's look at utilities now, XLU. So utilities, utilities are very interesting. Utilities actually are looking very bullish in my opinion. This is a sector that I've actually discussed or haven't discussed yet with my members, but I'm discussing it now and I've actually looked through quite a few utility-based company charts um, over the weekend and there's a quite a few that I do like on the long side. So I will be uh, sharing a few with my members um, just to go over some. Let's actually look through. I'm just going to pull it up on my other screen here, some of the utility-based companies and I just want to make sure I bring forth some good ones. Just bear with me here. So again, there are some utility-based companies that I'm eyeing up on the long side, and I'm just going to pull them up as I scan through here on my screen. All right, utilities. And again, what's interesting about utilities is they actually have a tendency to uh, outperform as the S&P is about to head into some, some choppy waters, some potential volatility some distribution. So they're more of a defensive based sector that uh, sees money flow during the times of volatility. Okay, so here's one. So looking at utilities, obviously this inverse head and shoulders, if we trigger this potential breakout, not only are we triggering an inverse head and shoulders on the weekly chart, but we're triggering a potential reversal in trend. If this breaks out and we get our first um, higher high in the trend, that's going to be really good because we've been getting lower high, you know, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high. So if we get our first higher high off of a weekly breakout, this inverse head and shoulders, that's going to give us a nice strong target to about 76.54. So, I mean, there's some pretty strong charts in this particular sector. We look at EIX, you know, that's recapturing some of its moving averages. This is the weekly chart. You can actually see it's trying to break out of this little area. It's tried here, failed, tried here, failed, tried here, failed. Now we're back above that zone again. You know, the fact that you're still seeing heavy accumulation in this region uh, is a strong sign. And I mean, you actually have a inverse head and shoulders that could be triggering here. So, I mean, a little weekly inverse head and shoulders. So this chart potentially looks poised to continue higher. You look at NI, NI is roughly trading about 12.31 billion in market cap, has a fair size of volume. NI just off of first glance looks like it's going to retest this resistance up around 28.26, 28 to 60, sorry, 28.60 to 28.75 in around that range. You look at uh, this type of pattern here, also another weekly inverse head and shoulders on the neckline, ready to break out. You get a trigger of some of these bullish patterns in some of these charts and we have a substantial amount of upside that could be present in uh, some of these utility companies you know take a look at that you know not only would you be breaking out of this potential mini formation then you could substantially have a longer term 
breakout out of some of these um, utility companies. Just scrolling through some other charts as well. There are some weak names that you got to watch out for and be mindful of. Then you look at PEG. That's another bullish name. I'm just going through some of the bullish names, you know, statistically and looking a lot more likelier to continuation. This one has broken out. You know, you look at the two trend lines you're currently trading above on the weekly chart. That's a nice little breakout. You just need to confirm that weekly chart, but a nice bull flag pattern on PEG. You know, this is uh, roughly, it's called Public Service Enterprise Group. Their market cap is $32.42 billion, average 30-day volume, 30 or 3 million shares. So liquid, 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 definitely looking for long-term calls, short-term calls. So uh, watch this name for a nice potential bull flag breakout, as well as a nice, beautiful weekly inverse head and shoulders breakout. Strong looking chart. Very, very strong looking chart. Let's continue here. I'm just going to scroll through some of these other names quickly. Here's another name that's trying to break out. ATO. 17.5 billion. A little less volume on this name. So this one has uh, bigger outsized moves. But uh, attempting a little bit of a breakout here. ATO. You know, and utility companies aren't really the household names that people are trading. They don't make these massive moves but once you get a consistent trend to form utility companies can make rather large outsized moves you know scco is one that's been a little extended that chart's not looking bad so utility companies there's a few more names that i'm going to hold to my chest that i like on the long side as well as i've scanned through some but uh, definitely keep your eye on some of these names because they are looking a little bit more bullish you know they've been through meaningful consolidation they're not overbought they're not extended and uh, if you get these weekly chart breakouts to trigger on the utility ETF you're gonna see some money flowing back into these names I mean even if you look at NEE which has arguably the largest weighting in the utility ETF <clears throat> you can see NEE what's interesting about this chart is you've had a weekly chart breakout you're into some daily resistance look at the daily chart resistance that's your 200 MA so notice on this pop here how extended you were from the 200 MA. Then you sold off, created a little bit of a higher low. Now on this pop, you're actually tagging the 200. You probably get a little sell-off, but that sell-off won't be as deep as this one. And then the next attempt at tapping this 200, you're actually going to break through it. And where I think you're going to be going is to your weekly chart resistance, which sits at EMA113, 69.14. And that just so happens to correlate with these lower boundary pivots down here. <clears throat> so right in this range is I think where actually next area energy is going to break out to. And then you should see some more positive flow across the whole utilities company. So utilities are certainly looking interesting to me on the long side, um, just as a more of a conservative approach to the overall market. All right, healthcare stocks are actually under pressure, significant pressure on Friday, XLV closed down 0.14%. And you can see that a healthcare is actually starting to get a little bit of a bear flag pattern here on the daily, trading underneath the 20 daily moving average in blue, and also trading now under the pink moving average, which is your 31 day moving average, your monthly. This looks like a bear flag, just a simple high to low, nice wedge pattern. This appears like it's going to break down your first supports at 143. That's a day trading level. Second day trading levels at this gap fill. But ultimately, I think the bigger swing trade level based off of this little distribution pattern, based off of this wedge pattern breakout, is probably a retest of 140 or 138, right around this region. So I think healthcare is due for a little bit of a back testing of support, which is why I probably wouldn't have uh, looked to play many of these names on the long side at this point in time. Weekly chart. Still very extended, but putting in a nice potential consolidation, you have consolidated for one, two, three. This is your fourth week of consolidation. So it is consolidating. And the beautiful thing about the bulls is you're still consolidating inside of this higher weekly confirmed breakout candle. So that's a positive sign, but I still think that your big support is at 143 and then your major supports at 138, 139 on the chart. So look for a back test in that region. All right, final sector, XLY, so the likes of Tesla and Amazon. Very, very impressive sector considering the, the weakness in Tesla. You know, XLY is still a very strong chart looking like it's going to press higher, which makes you think, is Tesla going to bottom soon? Should we, pick, should we be picking up Tesla calls? Should we be picking up, uh, you know, a position there? 
it makes you question things. It makes you question things. But we'll take a look at Amazon and Tesla as well since there's some household names. But clear inverse head and shoulders is triggered. You did get that weekly golden cross. Sorry, it might have been a daily golden cross. Yeah, it was a daily golden cross where you had the 50 and the 200 intersect in an uptrend. So the showing the long-term trend is uh, valid and likely going to continue to go higher. But if I just see where the 50 moving average cross, there was your golden cross. Your 50 intersected with your 200. Typically, market participants get, or the golden cross gets sold into, which you can see that you had some sell side pressure here. But it does make the viable trend um, a little bit more healthy, the fact that you did get this crossover. So I still think we're in a little bit of a consolidation range, but this particular sector is looking like it wants to press higher. I mean, the upside target off of this basing formation, believe it or not, takes you all the way to 235. It's not going to be a one-way move there. That's a huge, huge move to the high side. And when you look at Amazon, let's see if there's resistance or support in play on Amazon. Amazon's almost breaking out here into a massive resistance zone. Hasn't quite done so. And so a lot of the heavy lifting in this particular sector has been done from Amazon already. So in order for that upside target to be achieved, Amazon's going to have to continue pressing higher here. And Tesla itself is also going to have to firm up. And when you look at the divergence, the massive divergence in the ETF, Tesla breaking down below its weekly moving averages, Tesla triggering a, a beautiful weekly head and shoulders pattern that is looking very, very likely to play out. You know, this is not looking like a healthy chart on Tesla. Obviously, Tesla can still bounce here and say retest this little bit of a neckline break, which would take you back to 215, 220, and would give certainly a lot of legs to the ETF. But I see Tesla more so retesting this longer term trend line, going all the way back to 2020 breakout, your pivot low during COVID. I could see Tesla retesting that area before the bigger major bounce. And let me be clear, this downside target of this head and shoulders is a pretty big one. Can it play out or does it have to play out? It doesn't have to fully play out. But just keep in mind that a pattern on a weekly chart has triggered bearishly and it's triggered on the back of the S&P 500, the QQQ, the whole entire market being strong, even this particular ETF XLY being strong. So whenever you see patterns triggering in a strength-based market, it just puts into the fact that this is a weak stock right now, very weak stock. And then there was even an article that I wanted to discuss on Bloomberg, which basically points to, you know, copper prices. Copper prices have been breaking up. So one of the biggest components that EV vehicles need is what? Copper. So, I mean, when you have copper breaking out, the commodity that EV, EV vehicles rely on, that's not a positive sign for the margins of these EV companies. So likes of copper breaking out above here, $4. That's a bit of a headwind, an additional headwind for these EV markets. So things right now aren't technically getting any better. And maybe one of the reasons that EV stocks have also done so par so poorly along with rates staying a little bit higher is the fact that um, obviously the demand is one thing, but maybe the market participants have been expecting a copper breakout. Maybe the, the market is always forward looking and maybe market participants have already priced in copper surging higher from this point and putting additional pressure on EV margins. That could be potentially a scenario that is also unfolding in the EV stocks valuation. So lots there that is occurring across the consumer discretionary, but uh, we're just going to watch Tesla closely because if Tesla can firm up, there's obviously a lot of sympathy plays that will firm up across the board itself. All right, let's move along here into the next phase of this stream. Basically, um, we are going to uh, take some questions here. If anyone has any questions, uh, feel free to put some tickers that we will look through in the chart. I'm going to compile some questions. As uh, some questions keep rolling through, I'll take you know people's requests for the next 15 to 30 minutes, but I am going to scroll through some charts that I have lined up, basically doing some volume searches on some names. So I've put together, I've, I've done a little bit of a search through one of the screeners that I've run. And we're just looking at some interesting charts, both on the upside and the downside. Some charts have had breakdowns, some charts have had breakouts. But please feel free to put ticker requests, taking ticker requests. I will put that message in the chat so anyone else that joins gets to see that. Please request some tickers to look at. And again, requesting tickers are always uh, a nice way for 
myself to learn about new companies, new charts that I'm not necessarily paying attention to, as well as other people in the stream. Thank you, M.W. Malinch. But let me first review some of the charts that I have lined up here. And again, these are based off of um, some unusual volume plays, some volume breakouts, some volume breakdowns. Obviously, first things first, Lululemon had this massive technical breakdown. Remember, this is a household name, so it's likely going to get gobbled up. It had a significant bounce, traded all the way down to 387. We actually traded this in the live day trade room, but obviously Lulu has had a massive Massive technical breakdown. I'm just going to remove all of these key moving averages for now just to clear things up. But you can see Lulu, big, big breakdown, actually getting a daily close below this upsloping uh, trend line of support that kept Lulu's trend intact since March of last year. So, a one year, 12 month trend line was broken on Friday with an absolute mega gap down on earnings. Huge amount of volume, huge amount of volume. Now, what's interesting about this ticker is obviously it comes on the back of consumer discretionary stocks, Nike Lulu being weak. It wasn't really their earnings report that was weak. It was their forward guidance. So what's interesting about this name is you are into a whole host of support here. You can see you hit the 786 FIB level. But this stock is likely going to go lower, especially if you put in a bearish pattern underneath this one-year trend line. If Lulu can recapture this trend line, then you could regain this gap fill. Eventually, I do think Lulu will regain this gap fill. So I mean, even as a long term investor taking some long dated calls, probably uh, are, are worthwhile down here. But there is a scenario where Lulu could actually go lower. A couple levels that I'm looking for on Lulu. Let me just erase this. I'm looking for a 618 level retracing to 353 on the chart. If we throw on some of the moving averages, the EMA 113, you can see that I even think you'll retest that maybe this week, this coming week. You know, around 381, that weekly EMA 113. But this type of a technical breakdown is likely going to make us retest the weekly 200 MA. Notice how during Lulu's bear market phase here, you held this weekly EMA once, twice, you know, for multi weeks, three times, four times multi weeks, five times multi weeks. That was your major, major, major technical support area. And I think that one can be loaded up on the long side if we retest in that area. There's also a scenario where Lulu can actually have a much bigger degree in fall. If Lulu gets a bounce here and starts to create a right shoulder, then we got to watch for a potential technical breakdown of a neckline. And that would mean that Lulu and some discretionary stocks are actually entering a big, big bear market. Because again, if Lulu creates a right shoulder here and triggers it, it could break down. But as of now, I think that it's still technically short term oversold. I would look for potentially buying this um, 381 and knowing that it could trade down all the way to about 353, the 618 Fibonacci zone before you have a really, really big technical support. So that one had a huge amount of volume on the breakdown on the on the downside. Uh, a couple other stocks, obviously DWAC is on watch with news of Trump. So I mean, keep this one on because it is seeing a heavy degree of volume. It actually is looking like it's having a technical breakdown, but this one's wild because it seems that every time it has a little bit of a technical breakdown, buyers come in and swoop up. So I'm actually looking for potentially an intraday reversal tomorrow. You can see you hit this major technical gap. If for some reason it's flushing into this low pivot of this daily, I think you can look to take a stab on the long side, but just recognize this should be traded with small, small position sizes and really no size should be uh, used in this particular ticker. It's definitely one that's volatile, manipulated, and doesn't have really a fundamental backdrop other than the news that Trump is in the news and running for presidency. So it's momentum-based play. Uh, Dutch Bros had a big, big uh, uh, fall, looking like it's uh, it's obviously having some buyout news. But uh, what's interesting on the buyout news, Dutch Bros actually um, fell, you know, fell in huge volume. So maybe it's just one way that Wall Street is shaking people out and accumulating. Dutch Bros has actually triggered a bullish inverted head and shoulders pattern here, which should take you basically upside off of this technical pattern is a fair degree of upside still it should take you to about 42 on the chart. There's a beautiful daily gap fill. You know, if you were to fall into this area, I think it's worthwhile taking a stab on the long side. You can see why did Dutch Bros get rejected off that area? Simply speaking, the EMA 113 on the weekly chart, definitely a powerful moving average. So I'm looking at this one for a little bit of lower price action, but potentially showing signs of uh, wanting to be bought out. So we'll watch this name closely. Nike, 
also had a really, really big breakdown following uh, Lulu's footsteps. So consumer discretionary based uh, clothing stocks, sportswear stocks got absolutely slaughtered. Big breakdown on Nike. Nike is triggered a head and shoulders on the daily chart, which points to lower prices. You know, you're talking about 80 bucks, but Nike's at a long term support trend line. This is not no Mickey Mouse small time level. This is a trend line that goes all the way back to your COVID low, pivot low to pivot low. So this is a over four year trend line. Nike's hitting it off of four weeks of consecutive selling. So naturally you expect this area to hold, but I do think that Nike's actually going to probably put in a bearish pattern here and likely go a little bit lower. This double bottom and gap fill will be a nice potential bounce area in my opinion if you flush into it intraday, but definitely be mindful that it is looking a little bit weaker. Just scrolling through some of these other charts, you know, you've had monster moves in some of these stocks like Ocugen. FedEx had a nice move to the high side, so FDX breaking out to the high side, getting slightly rejected at this major pivot point. But FedEx, if it can establish some inside bar consolidation, as long as you keep this low, you should look to make a move higher on FDX. So FedEx transport stocks looking poised to try to get above this weekly reversal. Remember, this is a high... This is a wide range red bar weekly candle. So this is not going to be easy for market participants to get through. Look at the volume that was traded on that candle. Way more than this earnings gap up, substantially more. So if FedEx gets through this candle on a weekly close, this stock is probably going to start a very, very strong uptrend, a very strong uptrend. I'm watching it closely, FDX. This is kind of the line in the sand. You know, when you have a candle, I just want to see the amount of volume that was traded. We traded in that candle 37.36 million shares. The average for that week was 9.9. .9. So you almost you had 3.7 times the average weekly volume traded in this weekly candle. Even with a monster gap up on Friday's earning report, traded over 8 million, you still had way more shares traded in this little gap zone. So what's interesting, this was a previous earnings gap down. Now this is a gap up. So I'm watching closely because if we get above that, the stock should rip higher. And I could do some quick preliminary targets based off of what I'm seeing here. You know, you get through this weekly pivot zone, you'll have some resistance at double top, but this stock is probably going to about 350. That's my upside target in the short term. So I'm looking at 350 on FedEx if we get above that wide range red bar. All right, just scrolling through, I do see some of the tickers. You know, I, there's uh, we'll discuss um, MW Moench's suggestions, KR, Siri, BA, AMD, Unity. Then we have some from Mindful Meditation, Pulte, Homes, Pfizer, Fastenal. So I have a bunch there loaded up we will discuss. I just want to go through a few other names here. Obviously, we're seeing marijuana stocks running to the high side. Look at this breakout on Tilray. I think canopy growth was even more impressive but this is a nice potential weekly inverse head and shoulders breakout you've established this rather long basing formation a nice double bottom off of your right shoulder this chart you know believe it or not has an upside of roughly you know we have to technically take it from the neckline here so where we're breaking out so this could put us back to about 468 on uh, Tilray that would be a monster move on Tilray but marijuana stocks are seeing a lot of chatter are seeing potential signs of uh, legalization chatter with the elections approaching. So I think whichever side promises this will be a huge bid and likely win in the U.S. presidency candidate. You know, I think that marijuana is a wild card that politicians can absolutely use to their advantage if they try to legalize it federally on a recreational basis. I think that would be extra, extra positive. You know, look at canopy growth up 68.64%. You know, you are coming up into your first little resistance here on the weekly chart. Take a look at that volume, monster volume. I remember we were able to trade this. I wish I still hold. I sold my position. We were long at 322, caught this huge candle, but we sold here at around this upper range, you know, netted a nice profit, but missed pretty much this last 68.4% rally on Friday. Very disappointed, a little bit of regret, but, you know, where can canopy growth go to if it breaks this formation? You know, just simply speaking, if it breaks this range, it could have still a 4x from this neckline. You know, I mean, it would roughly be a 187% gain, but we're talking about a move to potentially 23 bucks on Canopy. Obviously, I don't think it goes there in a straight shot, but when these crypto stocks start running, just look at these three weeks of rally. 
one week, two week, three week, all the way up high. I mean, you're shaping up for a potential bull flag breakout on the RSI, a nice positive divergence. This could be a uh, monster mover. Would I buy it at this short-term resistance? No, I'd probably wait for a small corrective pullback, maybe to 658. But when these stocks get going, they tend to absolutely rip. I mean, you look at MJ, marijuana ETF, that's a huge daily, daily chart breakout on Friday, closing the session above this huge resistance point. Next stop, 440 gap. Then you have 470. And I mean, once you break 470, then we're off to the races. But look at that downsloping trend line breakout on the weekly chart. That's pretty much a thing of beauty. Pivot to pivot breakout on volume. Nice looking chart. MSOS also looking very, very constructive to move higher here. You know, big breakout, volume check back, higher low. Another push, higher low. Another push, now you had a higher high. Check back, another higher low. Now you're looking to potentially make another high off of this little breakout. So MSOS is forming a nice inverted head and shoulders here. You have a really, really strong structural pattern on the weekly chart, which is pointing to more upside. So again, do we see actual legalization come through this go around or is it just merely chatter? I think if it does come through, you're going to have insane hype, probably just like when we started those IPOs across all of these marijuana companies in, in 2016. I mean, you look at say Canopy Growth, which traded that whole marijuana craze when Canada was going through legalization in 2016. I mean, look at these run-ups. You know, we're talking about the U.S. market. If they potentially legalize federally, what type of run-ups just on speculation and hype can we do? You know, these companies traded at insane valuations when things were going legal in Canada. You know, canopy growth hit 586. Do I think we hit these highs? You know, is the likelihood no? Am I betting on that? No. But am I betting on a, a 1 or 2x from these areas? You could certainly easily achieve that within a, even a 1 to 2 week time frame. Definitely very volatile, but uh, a lot of promising signs based off of this insane volume that is traded. So marijuana stocks certainly showing some positivity and signs of life. All right, I'm just scrolling through some other charts here looking for other potential setups. I mean, Peloton's just a nasty looking chart. That one uh, seems to be wanting to go lower and lower. I mean, look at this disgusting looking chart. Anyone that's bearish on Peloton or Peloton, you know, I can clearly see why. Nice bear flag. It's looking like it's going to break this level and make new lows. Just in a consecutive downtrend. That's a huge, huge weekly bear flag. Not a strong looking chart on Peton. Look at uh, another long setup I'm looking at, guys, is ACN. This one's been under immense pressure since its earnings gap down. Uh, ACN, big gap down on earnings, followed by a little bit of a bump into the EMA, and then a huge reversal back down. Two consecutive high Volume days to the upside. Day traders, be ready. This one's coming up into a critical, critical support zone. What support zone am I looking at? Well, if we simply look, we have that daily 200 MA sitting at 331. That level is also accompanied by the 3A2 Fib retrace, this low pivot to this high pivot. This is a big support zone for ACN to actually bounce for a day trade and potentially even a swing trade. So this is now getting very, very oversold. RSI has collapsed and you're coming up into a huge, huge support zone. So keep that level on watch. You also have a beautiful breakout zone here off of a higher low and you have your impulse green candle, this reversal. So watch this 331.50 level. That is a level that I'm looking to trade on the long side this week. I'm hoping we get a gap down into it because I will absolutely buy it and probably look for some calls, some longer dated calls. You know, the ultimate downside, I think, where you get the bigger swing trade bounce, just recognize this stock could go lower. So if you draw your trend line, your upsloping trend line, this is your one year trend. You know, that's probably sitting at around 315 to 317 in around this this range. OK, so ACN is another one. Keep on watch. All right, I'm going to talk about one more ticker here and then I'll go through all of your holdings or all of your suggestions. Just let me just quickly see here. If there's any other ones worth mentioning? You know, you've seen some Clorox, some other uh, consumer staples 
names retesting gap fills retesting key moving average seeing huge bullish engulfing candles that's a beautiful check back into support off of the daily 200 and the ema 113 and look at that daily bullish engulfing candle on volume so a name like clorox you know i'm actually long full disclosure and i do think that the chart is looking extremely bullish you've actually triggered this inverted head and shoulders and it is seeing a heavy degree of volume right off of that earnings gap up so that's showing that okay this earnings gap up although you shook out a lot of shook out a lot of weak hands it's showing that the same buyers that gapped it up are willing to step in and push it up at this level i still have an upside target of about 193 over the next uh two to three months for clorox scrolling through my list here uh visa let's take a look at visa quickly another household name all right, so interesting with Visa. Visa caught my attention on Friday because, again, you had a huge high volume reversal, mega, mega reversal on the charts. Look at that daily candle. That's not a good sign for Visa. Weekly chart, weekly chart, wow. Look at that weekly topping tail. So that's a thing of beauty for us traders because now, intraday, we can actually short Visa. Visa's put in a little bit of a near term topping signal. That is a weekly topping signal. So typically, stocks like to retrace 50%. You know, so if we get a retrace to about 287, 285, 286, I think you can look to start a short position in this name, even buy some out of the money puts, you know, maybe even a, a retest of say this 267 area, 268. Ultimately, I think you could retest 252, your previous all time high pivot. But uh, Visa is likely put in a near term top. And how I would play this is just using a stop loss. If you get a weekly close above this previous pivot, then uh, you just stop out of your trade. So I mean, right now the risk, the risk to reward. So say you lose that weekly pivot. Say you entered today, or say you entered tomorrow on some shorts, and you picked right at the low here. I mean, your weekly risk is basically 2.78 percent. No one's buying out Visa, so your weekly risk is 2.78 percent on a stop loss. And I think that the reward we could potentially short this basically down to about 266 at the minimum which would be about a 5.9. So it's almost a two to one, almost a three to one risk reward. So just a over two to one risk to reward basis on that. So look for a pullback in Visa, probably also means MasterCard is also going to look for a pullback. So nice heavy degree of volume on Friday. So definitely an interesting chart to keep on watch. App Lovin also saw uh, GME. GME saw some heavy volume on Friday. Let's take a look at GME. So GameStop's one that I thought was actually looking poised to break out. It did appear to be trying to break out of this long-term wedge pattern. You can see this pivot trend line goes all the way back to 2022. It appeared like you're trying to break out. This one is actually interesting because you did see a high degree of volume on Friday, higher than your last previous one, two, three, four, five days. Came on a down candle, closing at the lows, closing below this previous gap. But I wonder if this was just a little bit of a shakeout on the charts before you actually try to push higher. I think that GameStop can still hit 20 bucks. It's a high risk trade, but interesting to see the volume increasing off of this decline. Nice three week pullback. You know, obviously this one actually getting a bearish close below these two weekly pivots makes it suggest that you're going to recess double bottom. So, I mean, it's a tough trade on the long side, but definitely a, one that can squeeze and gap up on you real quick. All right, let's go through some of the suggestions here, guys. Thank you for putting them in. So let's, sir, let's first start off with KR. So Kroger, looking at the consumer staples name, a monster, monster move up in Kroger. Kroger has definitely seen some uh, strong capital rotation ever since it had this earnings gap up here. Kroger's just been a relentless monster, trending higher and higher. Saw a little bit of a pullback on Friday, but the pullback's nothing. Pullback's really nothing. Sure, it made a new high in the trend, new 52-week high, but and it engulfed the previous day. But the volume was pretty light. No real amount of concerning volume on the trend. And the weekly chart, still really bullish. Really, really bullish on Kroger. So I think that if you get sideways consolidation on this name, obviously what you want to do is if you measure this impulse green candle, from this breakout, this earnings breakout, to the high of this candle, what the bulls want to see, let me just adjust this. If you put on a Fib retrace from the low to the high of that breakout candle, 
you want to consolidate above this 54. Really, the bulls want to see consolidation in the upper range of this 25% breakout candle. So I think that any sort of consolidation pullback into this range could be bought. And I do think that you're going to test this pivot high. That'll be your next resistance. Notice how you've broken through this wide range uh, weekly breakdown candle here. That's a very positive sign. That just so happens to be sitting right above that uh, or right below that, you know, roughly 25% of this upper range candle. So keep this 54 zone on watch. That is a big, big support level, but I do think Kroger will head higher. I wouldn't short this name. It's a tough one, especially if the staple stocks start pressing higher, which I think they will. All right, let's look at Siri. Bit of a high short interest name. This one typically squeezes. So pretty big fall on Siri here. Pretty big fall on Siri. I just want to see my other charts. Weekly chart on Siri. Okay. So, I mean, it's in a clear downtrend. Do we have support levels? Let's see this first little trend line. So, your first trend line of support really lies a little bit lower. But if we use a channel of support connecting these pivots, You can see that you're really testing your first little channel of support right through these pivots, right through this wick. You can see you're actually testing and arguably you're hitting that zone as we speak ever so slightly. So, I mean, aggressively, you could probably buy this area and hope for a bounce. I could see you bouncing back to this on just a pure little dead cap bounce scenario. I could see this bouncing back to, say, 410 but not a healthy chart. You're getting a bearish crossover of the EMA 113 and the 200. You know, did you get the death cross? Let's see. The death cross on the daily chart is about to happen. So you know what? Maybe this is a potential dead cap bounce trade. Typically, you can actually buy the death cross on the daily chart. It does usually yield a bounce. It just means that the longer and medium term trend will resume lower. So, I mean, this is a chart that's looking like it's going to go lower, but they may try to um, pop this, push out some shorts, make a little bit of shorts nervous, get them to cover, and then take it lower. And really, once you breach this breakout candle, this impulse green candle low, you know, that's not looking healthy. But, you know, this is looking like a potential bounce trade. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine weeks down in a row. Wow. Impressive. This is going to make a new low, guys. This will make a new low. It's going to take out this liquidity here, and it will make a new low on Sirius XM. Not a healthy looking chart, so I wouldn't stick around it long. This RSI is suggesting we're going to make a new low, but can you get a bounce here? That's the question. It's it's uh, oversold enough to be able to do so, but definitely not a look strong looking chart of the long term. And really, I mean, you could gap down. I think if you gap down into this 369 support, you could potentially start a small position on the long side to create a little bit of a dead cap bounce. But uh, just understand it's super, super risky. Not a strong chart. <clears throat> all right, let's look at BA. So Boeing, we all know Boeing has gone through some horrific news from doors ripping off, engines lighting on fire, to wheels falling off. But Boeing's uh, still got that monopoly, duopoly, if you want to, call it. Um, it did get that death cross on the daily chart. Notice how it got the death cross right around this period of falling and you've actually seen a pretty strong bounce. So what's interesting is this is very similar to series charts. So you got the death cross, obviously more selling ensued, but then the death cross was kind of a signal shortly after that to buy. So again, we're about to get the death cross on Siri. Maybe it has one more little flush. That could be a short term buy signal, just like Boeing. Now, Boeing isn't necessarily going to be an all outright buy here because it does suggest lower price action to come. Why does this suggest that? Well, you had this breakout to all time highs that failed horrifically on news. Then you put in this rather large consolidation period. And if you just simply measure this bear flag, this high to this low, take a look at the potential all the way down to 150 on the chart for Boeing. Boeing not only has triggered also a death cross on the daily chart, you know, you take a look at this weekly chart. We just lost the weekly 200 MA with a bad weekly volume gap down. Look at that volume. That's not no uh, small seller selling. Obviously, you're hitting some double bottom support here in an oversold condition, which is why Boeing's bouncing. But you're, you've lost this trend line. 
on a gap down. If you can get above 196 or this upsloping trend line, then you could push higher and test maybe 212, the 50 week moving average. But until you get above this 196 area, I think Boeing's going to put in a potentially a bear flag right underneath the weekly 200 MA. And then I do think it moves lower. Could I check my network? Yeah, I could check my network. Let's see. Still showing I have really good strength. Anybody else stream is lagging? Hopefully not. Maybe it's just a quick little interest. Showing I have uh, four bars full strength on my uh, network. All right, so Boeing, again, I still think it goes lower, but it is a vehicle that uh, could be traded intraday on the long side up to about 197 here, this previous little gap fill. So that's, I think, your big resistance. This previous liquidity zone where price action broke out, that's your big resistance in my opinion. Definitely interested, looking, interested that Boeing was all the way up to 193, 192 on Friday and then saw a nasty reversal. So I would wait. I'd give this more time. You know, I would wait for a little bit of a long signal to get above this 196, this gap, or this upsloping trend line. And then that might be the long signal on Boeing. All right, final stock, final couple stocks for um, Mo, MW Mo Wench. So he wants to look at AMD. So everyone's watching AMD here because it's at a critical support zone. So AMD is hugging the 50-day moving average. So clearly AMD has seen some underperformance really since NVIDIA announced its new chip. Really since Micron earnings, you know, Micron gapping up, AMD's really struggled. AMD is at some pretty decent sized support here. The daily 50 moving average, we haven't really tested that area since you actually broke below it really here in October of 2023. The thing about AMD is that's a nasty weekly topping till followed by another two consecutive weeks of selling. You know, I still see the bigger level of support at your previous all time high pivot around 164. I think that's your bigger buy level. You know, I think it's a little bit aggressive to still buy the 50. Could you get a couple days bounce here on AMD? You probably will, to be honest. You know, the fact that it bounced here once, got rejected again, closed below it, now you're holding above it. So there are some signs of accumulation here. I mean, even if you just look at the intraday chart, let me flip to the regular hours. You can see that AMD is trying to form a little bit of a, here's your low, here's your next low, here's your higher low. So maybe it's your first little higher low in the overall trend but then you got to be mindful that okay if amd bounces ever so slightly here you know what type of a bounce are we going to get maybe a retest of the 20 day since we broke that so viciously so say we get a push back up to the 20 day then amd could be forming a little bit of a head and shoulders here which uh, your neckline would be drawn from this pivot to this pivot so i'm watching amd probably for a short-term bounce here and then whether or not we get some sort of a bullish pattern that consolidates under this 20 day moving average or do we form a little bit of a bearish wedge so a couple different outcomes we just don't know yet but it is that technical support with the strength in the semiconductors you would favor it for a bounce here so i mean 190 calls probably retesting this gap fill look uh, probably like a very likely positive trade so hopefully that helps you're good to me thanks paul appreciate that all right, final share for Mo Inch, unless he has a couple other names, we'll look at Unity, so ticker U, and then I'll go through some of the other tickers that people have suggested. There's still Pulte, Holmes, Pfizer, Fastenal. I'll look at uh, Gary, USDT. Okay, we'll take a look at that. I'm not even familiar with that. All right, guys, so looking at Unity Software here, Unity Software in a clear technical downtrend underneath all of the key moving averages, getting rejected at the short-term 20-day moving average. Nothing really of great strength in this chart. Let's look at the weekly chart. So, I mean, Unity has a little bit of an upsloping trend line, higher lows. Really, the higher lows are observed through this trend line. So, I mean, could you see Unity? Could I see Unity flushing to this area, this 2247? I could. I think that uh, it's short term, a little oversold. You're getting a double bottom on the RSI. 
with actually a higher low in place. So positive divergence is being observed. You could actually see Unity retest a little bit higher here, but still a very weak looking chart. You know, I still think Unity is poised to potentially break lower, at least test this area down below, but you could probably try to bottom pick it here really as a trading on a trading basis. You don't want to see Unity lose this daily chart upsloping trend line. That's kind of your big level. At the moment, Unity could be putting in potentially an inverse head and shoulders on the intraday chart. So a minor accumulation pattern doesn't necessarily mean it has to fulfill it. It only triggers if you break the neckline. But watch for a right shoulder formation on Unity, maybe showing some signs of accumulation. Could be in some initial bottoming formations off of this area. But again, you break this upsloping trend line, you're going to head down to about 2274, which I mean, that's still a decent drop for trading, about a 10% range, you know, currently speaking about 15% off that range. All right, so hopefully that helps on Unity. All right, let's look at Pulte Homes now, PHM. And again, if there's any other tickers you guys want me to take a peek at, let me know. So Pulte Homes weekly chart closing at new weekly all-time highs. What a monster. What a monster chart. You know, I don't even see any resistance trend lines. So it's always difficult trying to get in front of names like this when there's no resistance trend lines. So you wouldn't even want to try to short this. The only extension moves you can calculate is based off of bull flag patterns here. Some standard deviation moves, some previous measured moves. You know, you're getting a short-term little bearish divergence. So the bearish divergence is observed with lower highs on the weekly RSI. And you actually have higher highs here in price. So that's short-term. You know what? Watch out for that. It's not a positive sign. doesn't mean it's going to break down because you look at the consolidation that Pulte Homes has done here. And that's a big bull flag on the daily chart. You know, you take that high to low. And you could still see this name push up to about 135 on the chart just off of this consolidation. And then, I mean, you know, you had massive consolidation here, broke out, and now you've had mini consolidation here. So you have one major bull flag and one minor bull flag. So whenever you start seeing, you know, a major bullish pattern followed up by another minor bullish pattern, those are always the charts you kind of want to be long and continuing to, uh, continuing to accumulate. So this chart still looks poised to go higher in the daily and weekly time frame. Just uh, know that uh, you know it's it's had a breakout on the weekly chart, but uh, more consolidation still could be coming in this name. But definitely a strong looking chart, and I don't even really see any resistance. I mean, if we do a measured move from say this low to this high, let me actually use the other tool. So I'm going to use the price and date range. So if you take this low pivot to this high pivot, this green candle, that was roughly 134% move over 280 days, 40 bars of price action. You extrapolate that forward. Let's just copy and paste that. Let's copy and paste that to this low, which is almost there. So we copy and paste that to that low. And you can see that it's almost an exact measured move, roughly about $48. I actually lowered it slightly, but uh, pretty much an identical measured move. It's just happened in a much shorter time frame. This move from this low to this high is basically 48 bucks. This is a $49 move. So a measured move has a curve, which means that it is technically overbought and really made a move that is, uh, is historically congruent and structurally balanced compared to its previous breakout move. So just be mindful that, I mean, this stock is had a very, very large move and it should see a little bit of selling despite its strength. I was hoping real estate would tank. Yeah, you know, it's a tough sector. Most people were betting on that because rates remain firm, but I think uh, with the liquidity and the discount window, you know, added to regionals, added to it just somehow has propped these stocks up. You know, I've, I've been surprised at how resilient it's been as well. A couple other real estate tickers coming through here as well. Look at SPG since we're on the topic of um, 
real estate. You know, ITB is still a monster stock. Still a bearish divergence on the monthly chart of ITB. Weekly chart, beautiful consolidation, breakout, looking like it wants to go higher. But again, still extended, but still very, very strong. I mean, ITB, just want to draw something on the chart here, just for my purposes. You can even see, look at that channel that it's broken out of. So, you know, that's an impressive move for a channel to keep us in check really since COVID. Now you're actually breaking out of it, doing a little peekaboo weekly breakout. That's very impressive. You know, tough thing to short, tough thing to bet against right now, but definitely extended. Definitely very extended. All right, we'll look at SPG, so Simon Property Group. Give me a minute with this one, guys. I'm just looking at my other screen. All right, so first things first, SPG, Simon Property Group, starting with the monthly chart. Monthly chart kind of looks scary bullish at the moment, especially uh, since you're trying to break out here. Look at this monthly inverse head and shoulders, okay? So when these trigger, guys, you want to be uh, mindful. You want to be on watch. So your monthly neckline would be here. And look where we're trading at. We're trading right into that neckline. So if this monthly pattern triggers, I mean, you have looking like you have 12 months of upside in, in some of these commercial real estate stocks. You know, that's not no, that's a, that's a big, big time accumulation pattern, guys. You can say you've tried, you've actually broken out if you use this high pivot neckline, but the truly technical neckline is from this right shoulder. This is your right shoulder pivot high. So that's technically the inverse head and shoulders neckline. And again, just to calculate this type of target, you're looking at almost a 3x gain. So a 3x gain if it triggers this monthly. Now for a pattern to trigger on the monthly chart, you're looking at a, uh, at a monthly close above the neckline. So I'm actually just going to keep it conservative and use the official neckline as the resistance because right now we're below it. So if you use, use if you use the official neckline as resistance and you take a measured move, you actually break out. You're looking at a move to 294 on Simon Property Group. Now again, this is a monthly pattern, so it's not going to be a short move there. You're looking at at least 12 to 24 months. I mean, to map out roughly how long it would take, you take this low wick on your head, you pull your forward, your your day forward, how long this consolidation period has taken. And, you know, just using some simple historical consolidation history here, how long it took to bottom out before how long it's taken to break out. You extrapolate that forward, assuming we break out of this monthly trend line here. And you're looking at a move that takes you all the way into 2028. So we're talking about a four year time frame where if this stock breaks out of this monthly chart, you're looking at a four year move all the way up to about 294, 295. So pretty astonishing. Now, whether or not say that happens in the first two years, that could happen for sure. But uh, watching this stock for a potential monthly breakout, three days left in the month, it's gonna be interesting. Obviously you can see you're getting rejected right off the neckline on a weekly topping tail. So that's concerning. Big, big distribution bar, also a heavy breakdown bar. So. You know, I would look to potentially, if you're wanting to chase the sector on the long side, obviously you had your consolidation range over here. This was kind of your bull flag zone where you broke out. So if you get some sort of a retest back to the top of the channel, aggressively you can buy it. EMA, EMA 113 a little bit more conservative. So definitely keep that one on watch for a monthly chart breakout. It can also help lift other aspects of the real estate sector. All right, let's look at Pfizer for Paul. PFE is the ticker. So this ticker has been notoriously known for being called the, the value trap. 
Now I've traded Pfizer. We did have a position with members off of this capitulation flaw. I remember having it around the 27, uh, what was it? 27, 25 zone. And we did sell somewhere in this upper range. So I did exit Pfizer. Obviously Pfizer, you know, is a behemoth company in the pharmaceutical space. Is it worth buying at these areas right now? You are seeing a heavy volume of accumulation. Three weeks of capitulation, wide range weekly red bar was kind of your last capitulation low bar. And you really haven't seen it take out that volume uh, ever since. You did breach it briefly and then you put in a weekly reversal. So that's a strong sign showing that, you know what? We had a big capitulation bar on volume once. Several weeks later, you know, roughly what was that? 10, 12 weeks later, you got retested, breached the bar, and then market participants saved it. So you could try to bottom pick Pfizer here and just use this, um, what's this wick low? So use this 2566 as your stop loss. I have no problem looking to try to gain a position here on Pfizer and just using this as your stop loss. I think your risk to reward lies, you know, really at that pivot low. If you break lower, then you're going to go down to about 2169, which we'll discuss. But if you hold this low, then you could actually retest, you know, this upsloping trend line which is roughly sitting around 32 bucks, give or take a little bit. So, I mean, your upside is roughly about a 15 to 18% rally. Your downside using that stop loss is about a 5%. So that's a good three to one risk reward ratio on the long side of Pfizer. Now, if we look at Pfizer, obviously we have a couple upside targets, downside targets. We look at Pfizer, Pfizer's actually broken a very, very large, important trend line. You know, when you see a selling like this in a name of Pfizer, you know, we're not talking about a small company, you know, 10, 20 billion. We're talking about a company that has a moat around them, a cash moat, a product moat, you know, a market cap of 154 billion. That's a big size company. And one of the biggest in the pharmaceutical industry has just been bludgeoned on the monthly chart. You know, even oversold on the monthly chart, take a look at the back. I mean, historically, when you're buying, in and around these ranges, you get a bounce, but just look at this monthly RSI, right, on Pfizer. When you had this big sell-off on Pfizer from this high all the way down to the lows here on Pfizer, take a look at this RSI analysis, right? So say you hit a low here, right, off of this area. You got a bounce on Pfizer, a really big bounce from a low of 21 to a high of 27. That's a really big tradable range. Then you came down and dipped again, and made another oversold condition on the monthly chart, made a new low, hit that monthly 200, got a really big bounce back up to 27 and a half, give or take. And then what's interesting is the monthly RSI started breaking down again. You actually broke below the monthly 200, which is in turquoise here. Okay, let me just erase this too. You started breaking below the monthly 200. Look what we're breaking below this go around, the monthly 200 yet again. Obviously the RSI is oversold, and you're breaking a critical support zone. So you would naturally expect probably a bounce of like, you know, this area here. But just realize that, you know, when you started putting in a bottom here in Pfizer on the monthly RSI, it really wasn't until you had a three lower monthly highs on the RSI before Pfizer put in its true bottom here in 09. So just understand that Pfizer could go lower. There's also a monthly and weekly head and shoulders pattern. You can see on the weekly chart better. Look at this weekly head and shoulders pattern. Left shoulder, head, right shoulder. Your neckline was clearly triggered. Retest failure. Retest failure. That downside target takes you all the way back to 21, uh, 45, 21, 50. That's my actual measured move downside. That's where I would probably start loading the boat on Tesla my, or on uh, Pfizer myself. So just recognize that there is a downside target of 2145 that could occur. Could you bounce this area and retest 32? Yeah, you absolutely could. But my bigger accumulation level is around 2130. That's kind of your buy long-term shares, tuck them away for the long haul kind of thing on Pfizer. All right, let's take a look at uh, FAST, Fastenal, Fastenal for uh, Mindfulness Meditation. And again, any other tickers, please put them in the request chat box. Happy to take a look at some other names. Yeah, this chart's been a monster, right? Ever since you had that uh, inverse head and shoulders breakout, the stock really has never looked back. You had the breakout here, and look, you've even overshot target by a pretty decent-sized margin. So, I mean, the target for this inverse 
it was all the way up at 75 and you've uh, broken way past that now trading at a 78.64 rsi on the weekly chart you know if you compare that to its his history you know there's really only a couple other times in history that it traded this area traded to about 80 there 80 there in september and then in 1995 it pierced all the way up to about 83 so if we look at this uh, this february 12th period all the way back down here you know fastenal went on this extreme extreme move and then it wasn't long until you hit this way overbought weekly rsi area it was basically one two three four five six weeks you saw a pretty precipitous fall on fastenal I'm not saying you're going to go through the same thing but typically when you get to these rsi extreme extreme levels you often see some sell side pressure starting to come in even if you look at this last time it hit here in 2005 obviously it didn't sell off that hard during this time but you did go through a multi-week consolidation so your money was just flat to negative during that uh, couple month period then we scroll through again to the weekly rsi if you look at this last period here in in 1995 <coughs> So basically what was we looking at in May of 1995, I actually have to scroll in a little bit. You can see that once you hit that weekly RSI overbought zone, following three weeks later, sell side, sell side, sell side. So again, just recognize it's overbought. I wouldn't chase it here. It's still a very strong uptrend. You know, buy, dip buyers will likely swoop in once we hit, hit uh, key weekly moving averages. I think since you're into all time high territory, Really, the only thing you can do is decide, OK, do I want to be a long term investor buying around the, the 20 day moving average? Am I going to wait for 50? Do I want to wait for a 200 retest? You know, basically, I think your aggressive traders can buy the 20. A little bit more conservative what traders can wait for the 50 and the 113. So as long as you stay above the neckline and this previous all time high price, this is still a very, very strong uptrend. If for some reason we retested the previous high, that would be a major, major technical support area to go long at. All right, uh, why crypto is asking for Gary USDT? I'm not really familiar with that ticker, so let's take a peek. Gary USDT. Let's see. All right, so daily chart. Yeah, you know, very volatile name. Again, I know nothing fundamentally about this coin. Other than the fact on a technical basis, you're trading above the daily 200 here in turquoise. You're trading above the 50 and the 113 in purple and orange. The blue is your 20. So you're trading above that. Your seven day moving average is getting a short term bullish crossover that is about to happen. So your yellow seven and your blue 20 is about to get a short-term bullish crossover that does point to higher prices in the near term. You can see you're actually putting in a little bit of a bull flag pattern, almost this uh, cup and handle, this rounding basing formation. That's typically means positive price action. I think if you break these pivot zones on GAR USDT, so Gary USDT, you, know, you could have a pretty substantial move to the upside I think your key resistance is going to be obviously five cents and understand that this is a very very small coin i don't even know the market cap size on this coin let's just see if i can pull it up you know volume is average volume 13.74 i don't even have a market cap i'd have to check crypto market cap but just recognize this is a a small small coin and just trade it cautiously if you are i won't be trading it myself but gary usdt you know, looking constructive, it does look like it's trying to break out. You have the potentials. Again, you have the potentials for a nice little inverted head and shoulder, a bullish accumulation pattern. This is a bullish accumulation pattern. So again, really your neckline. A lot of top wicks here make it a little tricky to really narrow in price targets. You know, so names like this with these heavy top wicks can always overshoot. But I really think if you start clearing this neckline, and trigger this inverse head and shoulders yeah you got a pretty big move that could unfold in this coin and obviously we know crypto's hot so you have been seeing a lot of old coin catch a really big bid this one's still technically oversold rsi is above that 50 level so it does support higher price action 
but uh, definitely looking poised to move higher in the short term. As long as you can break this first wedge pattern trend line, and then your next target will be triggering the inverse head and shoulders. And then when you get above that, you're looking like you're making a move to about 11 cents on the chart. And then you have to wait for our other pattern. Obviously, this is a small name, so it can overshoot. So hopefully that helps there. Hopefully that helps. All right, guys, I'm just going to scroll through a couple of the charts, but I think I'm going to wrap up this video here. Again, you're seeing some heavy accumulation in DBC, IWR, the TIPS ETF, Micron, DBI, Vimeo, MMC, seeing a little bit of accumulation. Just trying to see if there's any interesting names that I want to pay attention to. I think uh, it's important to look at KRE, guys. Regionals are going to be on watch. Regionals are looking very, very bearish, getting rejected on Friday off of the short-term 50-day moving average. So regionals not looking good. Regionals are not looking good. Just scrolling through here. Let's look at NVIDIA's chart again. So NVDA. NVIDIA looks like it's going to make new highs. It's trying to break out yet again. Trying to break out yet again. Still inside this wide range heavy bar resistance, but it looks like it's trying to break out yet again. So we'll watch that closely. S&P 500 holding above the previous high pivots, still inside that tight upsloping wedge pattern. What's interesting again is about uh, how... Uh, the Russell small caps got absolutely whitewashed. They got washed on Friday, absolutely demolished on Friday when the relatively the Qs and the S&P were much stronger. So small caps weakening on weakening yields is not a good sign for small caps. They did get rejected again at resistance. So definitely relative weakness coming into small caps through regionals. And this could weigh on sectors. If small caps break down again, uh, it could be coming from regionals. And you have to watch biotechs. And if region, if we go through another little banking issue crisis where a couple of their smaller regions get put under pressure, it's not going to bode well for the entire financial sectors. And we did see some pretty sharp reversals in financials, even the large cap financials. So I'm watching for a little bit more weakness. Again, right now, Bitcoin's just pumping into the close, or sorry, pumping in the futures here. So BTC making another high move. It's now up on the session quite nicely. So definitely look for crypto stocks to pump tomorrow. You know, to think that Bitcoin on Friday closed all the way down here at the lows of around 63, below 63K. You're going to see MSTR coin, a bunch of these names absolutely rip and fly into the weekend. So crypto stocks look poised and continue higher. On that note, I am going to wrap up the video here, guys. I just want to say uh, thank you all for tuning in. If there's any final requests, put it in now. But uh, thank you all for tuning in. Thank you for putting in your suggestions. Hopefully this analysis helps. Again, to summarize things, just watch out for that dollar continuation move. We'll look for a continuation move in crypto. Has triggered a bullish pattern up to 69K again intraday. Uh, but the more sectors that I'm bullish on come across utilities. A couple of real estate stocks are on watch for longer term monthly breakouts. No problem, Paul. No problem, mindfulness. Thank you all for tuning in. And uh, hopefully we'll see you on the charts a little bit later. Cheers, everybody.